in the name of Zeus's butthole did you get out of your cell? <laughs> well, it might come in handy. Could prove to be useful information. Maybe. <laughs> I love this crazy like intonation. Greetings, fellow movie lovers. Welcome to Old Lady Reacts. I'm the old lady, otherwise known as Michelle. I'm a huge movie buff, and this is my channel where I react to mostly action and superhero movies that I've never seen before, but also other stuff that looks interesting or new. I started the channel so I can understand the inside jokes and references in WandaVision, and here we are more than two years later still reacting. I'm going through a bunch of super fun kind of 90s action movies these days, not really on purpose, but yeah, last week I watched Con Air, and everyone in the comments mentioned another great Nicolas Cage movie that I needed to watch, The Rock. The Rock came out the year before Con Air, so I probably should have started with this one, but whatever. Maybe I'll do Armageddon next and just like round out the 90s with that. Um, I remember when that movie came out. It was such a big deal. But The Rock is about Alcatraz, which should be fun. I've toured Alcatraz, so I'm excited to see if I recognize any of it. Um, we're going to see Nicolas Cage again, as I said, but also Sean Connery, legend, and Ed Harris, also legend, who I really like. Um, and I guess we're going to see John Spencer from The West Wing, David Morse from St. Elsewhere, if you're old like me and you remember, remember that show from the 80s, um, and John McKinley from Scrubs, so that should be fun. This has a 67 and 85% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, so not as big a split as Connor had, but it's still a pretty decent sized split, which always means that it's going to be interesting. It's maybe a cult favorite, but kind of ridiculous kind of movie. It usually goes along those veins. So yeah, this should be interesting. But before we get started, please like, subscribe, leave comments, do all the things. It really does help the channel. And make sure to let me know what you would like me to react to next. All right, let's dive into The Rock. Insert dramatic opening music here. <laughs> Very 90s. This is also Jerry Brockhammer, so it makes sense. I think there's going to be a lot of similarities between this one and Con Air, so we'll see. I wonder too how much this kind of stuff is it was influenced by A Few Good Men because that was a really popular movie when it came out. And I still don't have their attention. Let's hope this elevates their thinking. <laughs> okay. That's that sounds very like is it is this a good thing or is this a bad is he like does he turn into the bad guy? Rain always makes scenes very interesting, doesn't it? Like, it's, but yeah, I feel like that's that uh, speech from him, that little monologue, could have been really corny. But Ed Harris can pull stuff like that off really easily. For the security inspection team, yes, sir. Sir, it's an honor having you, sir. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we're just killing people left and right here, I guess. I got the access cards. We got 30 minutes till those darts were off. Oh, they're darts. Okay, so we're not killing people left and right. That's good to know. I did think it was kind of strange, like, as a military guy, like, he'd go in and, like, kill a bunch of soldiers. But So how did he get all these people to do this with him? So they didn't seem to have a lot of trouble getting into this facility. I mean, they're well, it's well planned, but they got a lot of people, but it seems to have gone pretty smoothly so far. So they're frozen? They keep them frozen? I had no idea. Oh. Oh, oh. That's bad. Oh, that's unfortunate. So that he said he wanted 11. They didn't get all that they needed, right? <laughs> That'll be five dollars, Isherwood. It's a good intro of, of a character. I like that. 
Whoops. <laughs> time on your hands. Yeah, it looks like it. Right, why don't you just spend $13 on the CD, man? First of all, <laughs> it's because I'm a Beatle maniac. And second- Okay, good to know. Yeah. But yeah, that guy was in um, High Fidelity. He was one of the one of the music store employees under uh, one of John Cusack's employees. You bring the cockroaches. Got them. We have airlock Stanley. You're all set. Oh, literal cockroaches. Fabulous. Look at Stan. Hi there, Stan. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, jeez. You're going to be okay. This is crazy. Idiot. I mean, <laughs> apparently he hasn't watched enough horror movies to know that you don't fiddle with dolls. Dolls are creepy and they can get really mess up. Is there enough C4 explosive and poison gas to blow the whole chamber and kill everybody in the building? Oh, that's lovely. Where are the sprinklers, Lana? And the cockroaches are exploding. Oh, God. Where are my sprinklers? We're working on it. It's coming. It's just a flow problem. Oh, that's a pretty big freaking problem. Yeah, maybe you should have tested those. Jiffy, now! Inject it in your heart before your suit melts. Shit. Inject it in your own heart? No. No, thank you. Take the to be now, Stan. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> they're starting. They're starting with some really tense moments. You want me to stick this into my heart? Are yeah. Nuts? Yeah. Maybe there's another way of delivering that. Yeah. Finally. Thanks, tolls. So he's had a tough day. Such an interesting day today. Yeah, I had kind of an interesting day myself. Mm hmm. I know. I'm rambling. I'm complaining. I'm sorry. What's your news, baby? I'm pregnant. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. I'm pregnant. <laughs> really? Uh oh. Are they married? It's just right now when you were talking about bringing a child into the world and having it be an act of. Cruelty. I meant it at the time. Stanley, at the time, <laughs> you said it seven and a half seconds ago. Well, gosh, kind of a lot's happened since then. Look, <laughs> we're not even married. <laughs> Will you marry me? Oh. Oh, she's gonna propose. Good for her. Marriage police pull over. Come on, Stanley, I'm proposing to you right now. Okay, <laughs> he has very blue eyes. Will you do something for me? you to tell your teacher that you need to get back on the boat and go right now oh they're good what's that it's to get rid of the kids that's they're gonna hold these the rest of the people hostage what kind of fucked up toy is this and now they're all <laughs> they're all kind of like stuck in the in the cells now as hostages that's a lot of hostages there was a, there was like 50 people there <laughs> okay, she's gonna be interesting throughout the whole thing. It's an anti-motion trembler device. It's custom made. Nobody knows about it. Trembler device? What is that? And then if they disturb Mr. Backup here, <laughs> we own them. I'm not sure I understood what that meant, but okay. I'm sure we'll see eventually. I'm sure that little detail will come into play. It's not our intention in any way to harm you. You will not be detained one minute longer than is necessary for us to complete our mission. I'm guessing something's going to go wrong and they're going to be detained a little bit longer than they expect. Make no mistake about it, gentlemen. We are now in harm's way. Does it know? When they don't come home, their families are told fairy tales about what happened to them. Okay. And denied compensation. Well, denied compensation? Why deny them compensation? Well, here and now, it's the lies like, stop! You're gonna make a fairy tale up. Give them compensation. God be with all of you. There's lots of blue eyes in this movie. <laughs> lots of very bright colored eyes. It's such a weird thing about some of these directors that they really like blue eyed people. To deliver a highly lethal strike on the population of the San Francisco Bay Area. 
I will call again at that all hundred would be unpleasant. It's a lot of people. See, he's got blue eyes, too. Well, now we can add kidnapping and extortion to his list of accolades. Mr. Sinclair, General Hummel is a man of honor. See, they've got, well, they've got both blue eyes, too. Like, what is it with all the blue eyes in this movie? How old are you, Chief of Staff Sinclair? I'm 33. Well, Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> Shut up until you're 34. <laughs> what movie is that from? Baghdad, after the conflict ended. No benefits were paid to their families. No medals confirmed. He's got light blue eyes, too. <laughs> These men died for their country, and they weren't even given a goddamn military burial. So this is a little bit Hunt for Red October-esque. Like, I've only seen Hunt for... I, I think I've seen Hunt for Red October. But I know that that's, that's kind of what he was doing in this movie, too, right? In, in Hunt for Red October, too, right? Do I make myself clear? So all he wants is for all his soldiers to be compensated correctly? We have to identify the hostages what is the and contact their families. Uh, tell them something, make up a story, and we've got to keep this undercover. <laughs> well, that's a lot of families. From, <laughs> that's a, there's a lot of people and a lot of hostages. Like, how, There's no way they're going to be able to keep this under wraps once that, they do that. Mr. Womack, who is your best chemical biological man? <laughs> I'm guessing that's Nicolas Cage. I have to go to San Francisco. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, I think he kind of does, honey. I've never had sex with shoes on. Like they don't, they don't stay on. If like little slip-on shoes like that are staying on your feet while you're having sex, you're not having good enough sex. <laughs> that way we can jump the Marines from behind, and if we're lucky, take the rocket positions without a shot fired. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. All the guards we contacted were useless. Um, there is someone who I think can help us. Oh, that's right. I forgot about Sean Connery. He's supposed to be coming in here at some point, isn't he? A bottle of carbonated, voila, champagne, and then the whole the gas. Dr. Goodspeed. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, very horrible, sir. come back around right to that. It's one of those things we wish we could disinvent. Disinvent. That's a good word. An exercise, is it? No, Dr. Goodspeed, it's not a training exercise. Such a weird name, Dr. Goodspeed. I don't know anybody who has a name like that. That's so weird. Now, my boys, they haven't been able to find a file on this guy. Who is he anyway, sir? His name is John Mason, a British national. This is a lot of exposition. Papers are in order, sir. We're prepared to offer him a full pardon and Paxton. Oh, he's going to get out in the end if he does this? Somehow I don't think that they're going to stick to their word if he does. Now, what might that be? been in jail longer than Nelson Mandela, so maybe you want me to run for president. <laughs> nope. Do yourself a favor. Might have been a mistake to give him a quarter. Coffee. No, no, I'm fine, thank you. Offer me. <laughs> yeah, I want some coffee, asshole. Why don't you go ahead and have some handcuffs taken off, please? Well, I guess that's one way to go. Willie Garson! Hello! He was in Sex in the City, and he's passed away now, sadly. And I also suggest uh, a haircut. Am I out of style? Unless you're a 20-year-old guitarist <laughs> from little. Seattle. <laughs> it's a grunge thing. Yeah. Grunge. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He doesn't know what grunge is, yeah. But grunge would have been the thing in the 90s when this came out, so it makes sense. I'm sealed off, and he gets two hours max. Does he still have the pen? And he's got the quarter. Uh. <laughs> Walmart. Now why am I not surprised, you piece of shit? <laughs> he gave up his quarter rather quickly. I he should have kept that and uh, used it to better effect. You're a chemical freak. <laughs> I'm a chemical super freak, actually, but I still need a gun. <laughs> uh, so my, probably a good idea. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, there's going to be all sorts of stuff you can nick on out of this place. I can't cut anyone's balls off with a trimmer now, can I? <laughs> yeah, you probably could, actually. Okay, yeah, here we go. Did you see him doing something under the... Hey, oh. Can't let it go to waste. Oh. <laughs> How much did he order? <laughs> And now they're all distracted, not paying attention. But Nicolas Cage is pay paying attention. Mm -hmm. 
My secretary hair will settle the Oh, it looks good. All right. That's a good haircut. What do you shake on? <laughs> yeah. He's going to throw him over the edge. Drop the gun. Or I drop your boss. You will not. Oh, and the birds. <laughs> Adding insult to injury. Where'd he go? Yeah, like how bad? How bad are these people at their jobs? <laughs> Good lord! I feel like there should have been a little bit more of of a distraction to in, this to. I care about is. Are you happy with your? <laughs> okay. Oh, now he's got a big jeep too. Okay, here we go trashing some nice cars. All right. There's another car, yeah. Gotta trash some nice cars. California, speed approximately 70 miles per hour. Yeah, <laughs> doing a lot of the up and down the hills, I guess. That's, I suppose they can't film a, a movie about San Francisco without having a car chase through the city. How did they get so close to him, too, is like, because he ran out. They weren't even down there to, like, run to get their cars. By the time they got to their cars, he would have been... It would have been at least a minute or two. Like, how did they catch up to him? I hope you're in short. <laughs> that was dumb. You're going down. What does this have to do with <laughs> with what's happening on Alcatraz? <laughs> like, I feel like they should be focusing on the uh, on the main part of the movie here. But like, oh, we got to just have a car chase to have a car chase. I rode one of those. They're fun. Hang on. And of course, there's a little old lady. <laughs> so cliche. Oh, my God. I feel like we've lost the thread of the entire movie here. Just so we can have a stupid car chase and crash some fancy cars. Yeah, you could probably kiss your streetcar goodbye. And of course, there's people in wheelchairs. <laughs> Oh, this is the dumbest car chase I've ever seen. Stacy, Jet's friend. Look at her eyes. Like, <laughs> there's like bright green and blue eyes. Who has eyes like that? Thank God Sean Connery at least has normal colored eyes. <laughs> so they let you out? Yeah. <laughs> well, kinda. What do you say we cut the chit chat a hole? How did he even have time to get his arm like wrapped up and then get in the car and get there? <laughs> I think they could have made this timeline work a little bit more realistically. To... I'll know when we're all inside. No, you're not goddamn going. Show us on the blueprints. You'll not god. You're not goddamn going. Like who says? Who talks like that? <laughs> How dumpy are their bathrooms? Where are they? <laughs> In fact, you look like shit. <laughs> My stomach's too That's the most disgusting bathroom I've ever seen. Look, I know this isn't easy for you. Remember, you were trained for this kind of situation, and believe me, it'll come back to you. Well, he didn't seem so nervous doing the thing before. I mean, he's clearly... Lieutenant Shepard will be attached to his hip. You breathe, he breathes with you. You piss, he helps. Understood. He should have said he he pisses you you piss he holds your dick kind of thing like you know like play with that a little bit more we can have more fun with that line. It's very strange music in here like they were playing some some very kind of like emotional music when talking to his when he was talking to his daughter and then that was very like heroic music. It's just like. It's almost, it's very cliche. And then it's almost like, well, who's really the villain here? And who's the heroes? And like, it's, 
everything's all kind of like w- mixed up a little bit. I don't know. It just doesn't, the feel of it isn't as clear as I would like. Listen, Stanley Goodspeed is my boyfriend. Actually, he's um, my fiance. Where is he? So this is kind of sexist. Like, why are there no female soldiers in this movie? And, like, why are like all the women are just like the daughters, a daughter and the girlfriend and like waiting while the men go do their thing? Like... Well, we know what kind of movie they're trying to emulate there. So why is that all? Like, isn't it? What is it? Like, nobody's living on the thing. So why is there an active, like, machine thing running with, like, fire? Is that supposed to be a furnace? That Like, why would they have a furnace running? Like, that's weird, but okay. So that looked really military-ish, though. So I'm wondering, is like, is Sean Connery a military guy that they screwed over the same way they screwed over all of Ed Harris's men? And that is the guy from Terminator 2, right? Or ter- yeah, is it both Terminators? Yeah, or Terminator One? He's not in two, but yeah, I recognize that guy too. Welcome to the Rock. <laughs> good line. I mean, that was a good moment, but. I don't know that the rest of it built up to it for all that well. Uh oh. I like the little, <laughs> like the little worm. <laughs> General, we've spilled the same blood in the same mud. You know, goddamn well, I can't give that order. Somehow, I don't think he's going to be reasoned with after all of this effort to go to this to get to this point. So it's just the two of them left now. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Whoops. Now what? All right, you want to play tough? You want to play tough with me? Okay, FBI, free sucker! <laughs> yeah, I don't think he, it's going to have the same effect as you think it does. You're not short. Let's find out. Yeah, let's. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Have you resolved the situation? Not yet. He's got all the guns now, yes, sir. <laughs> Losers always whine about their best. <laughs> okay. Winners go home and fuck the prom queen. Okay. Well, it was the prom queen. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like Nicolas Cage's character is kind of like uh, up in, like, is he nervous or is he super capable and kind of badass? Is like what? <laughs> I feel like that could have done, been done a little bit more surgically. <laughs> Most of the time I work in a glass jar and lead a very uneventful life. I drive a Volvo, beige one. Uneventful life, though, but like, like you just had this major thing happen at work. Sir, morgue team has not checked in. So they couldn't hear all of that? Alcatraz isn't that big. Like, you would have heard all of that firing that they were doing. <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of, like, Indiana Jones. Or there's just all these, like nonsensical things that like let's put them in on a motorcycle let's put them on a thing under the th- thing let's let's have an explosion let's have a car crash let's have a firefight let's have a thing it's which is a shame because it's a it's a good like, like the plot's good and like the 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 ideas is there I don't, I don't, th- I don't think Alcatraz has all that stuff underneath it. Like, are there caves and stuff underneath it? I don't think there are. It's a, it's a little island. It's just like a tiny little thing. It's not like, I feel like that would be f- filled with water if it was in the San Francisco Harbor. I find it amusing to think like, did Sean Connery at his age just be like, why am I still doing this stuff? 
<laughs> like, did he need money or something? Like, you know, all these like stunts and things. Like, he did all of that already in all of his Bond films. You think he wouldn't want to keep doing it anymore? Name and rank, Sarah. All we actually. Answer the question and address him as General Sir. Can you demand that of a of a soldier in, from another country? I don't think you can. <laughs> You're lucky that old man Hummel wants your life. He's gonna take pleasure in gutting you, boy. He's calling him old man Hummel? I don't think he'd appreciate being called that. Anyway, I only got one camera and there's two left. Nason? I was just thinking how wonderful it was when the inmates weren't allowed to talk in here. <laughs> one day I'd breathe free air. <laughs> Nicholas Cage looks really weird laying on his back upside down. <laughs> I wasn't sure that was him at first. The entire island is to be blanketed, not one square inch missed. 81 American civilians and a number of U.S. I was going to say, what about the hostages? Oh, well. <laughs> Whatever. Collateral damage. Through the intake pipe, but <clears throat> how in the name of Zeus's butthole did you get out of your cell? <laughs> Situation, well, it might come in handy. Could prove to be useful information. Maybe! <laughs> I love this crazy, like, intonation. Trade secrets, my son. <laughs> Should we pair for launch, General? I'll handle uh, the strategy, Captain. Maybe don't push me. Sir, just let the General know of the time, sir. I'm very aware of the time, Captain. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah, they're a little, they're a little too excited about this. I don't know. Not a murderer. I read it in his eyes. Read his eyes? Oh, well, then everything's just fine! <laughs> His choices are so interesting. Uh, glass or plastic? What? Glass or plastic? Glass or plastic? Shut the fuck up! Because if the winds change, after you launch those rockets, we're all gonna die! Well, they knew that already, like... Let's go find some rockets! I said shut the fuck up! Oh. Okay, that was good. Okay. Man, killing Navy SEALs is one thing. Is this for real? Hey, it's business. Yeah, they're awfully excited about it. Like, thank, thank God there's, a, there's a, one guy who's like, should we be doing this? <laughs> like, are we really going to do this? <laughs> Waiting for launch command, General. <laughs> Don't push me. <laughs> well, there's still half an hour to go, so. Fire. Fire. Oh. Okay. Uh. All right. I, I didn't expect that to happen. George. Did he just jump up and grab that with one hand and pull himself up? That's impressive. New direction, 275 degrees west. It's headed out to sea, sir. Well, that's good, at least. What the fuck is going on? Sir, Major! Captain, step outside. Talk to me, sir. Captain, step outside! Yeah, you're a little too excited about killing, th you know, thousands and thousands of people. Like, can you just chill out for a mo? So what the hell? I heard what you there? said. If you're going to be insubordinate, I'd appreciate it if you do it with a little more respect. What the crap, Joe? <laughs> well. That we have ignored, abandoned, or marginalized a great soldier like Frank Hummel. And American boys have paid for that neglect and blood. Well, yeah, there is all that. <laughs> I mean, it's fine that they gave their lives. I think they knew what they were getting themselves into. And like, they do, you know, soldiers know that stuff like that. So, but at least acknowledge them and don't hide their, like, just like, isn't that what he wa he wants? That's what he wants them to be acknowledged. You changed the coordinates, didn't you, General? That's affirmative, Captain. So now they think we're gutless, the feds. Oh, are they going to do a little mutiny on him and he's going to have to try and stop them? Whoever said anything about bluffing, General? Stand down, Captain. Is he going to join with these two to, to have to join it? Join with the uh, Shankari and Nicholas Cage to overcome these guys? It's not so simple, Frank. Sergeant Crisp, secure the general. Yeah, he doesn't like that command. <laughs> He's like, is he going to actually do Sergeant! it? Sergeant! 
yeah, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to do it. Yeah. It's been the greatest honor of my life to serve with you, General. You have to choose, dude. But like he said. Oh. It's over. Oh. It's like the end of Reservoir Dogs or something. Like everybody's just getting shot all over the place. Oh dear. Down. Come on. Let's play. Come on. <laughs> I think we got stuck. Yeah, he's a little nutso. Well, I only bring it up because uh, it's you. You're the rocket man. Oh, he's gonna. <laughs> Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that was kind of unnecessary. Like, I figured he was dead anyway. <gasps> uh oh. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna end up throwing it. I want to see him throw it at someone because we got to see somebody like one of the bad guys has got to get like hoist on their own petard with these. Uh... Toss him over the edge. Bye bye. Yeah, except that I still got one of them in my hand. Oh, he's gonna have to like. Sh like shoot himself up with the, in the heart with one. So they, they, they want to pull a Quentin Tarantino with that? <laughs> with the, injecting themselves in the heart with it? Oh! That would hurt. <laughs> I'm gonna my million bucks out of you! You're gonna die! Eat that, you fucker! Oh! Okay. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> want to see him stab himself in the heart. Yeah, what have you missed? Like, <laughs> like, how do you do that to yourself? Like, you can't even like. Seems like a rather mellow, dramatic detail that wasn't really necessary. <laughs> Oh yeah, launch the green, launch the flares. Target acquired. Rolling in. <laughs> it's trying to be platoon as well. Like, oh my god. Stay tight, gentlemen. <laughs> it's like, does it, is there anything original in, a, in any of this? You know, I mean, the, the the plot is original. I think they could have had a really cool. <laughs> Whoops. Good speed. It's Womack. What about Mason? He's dead. He's dead, sir. How? When? Just come and get me. Womack tore up your pardon, John. Of course. I knew he would. Yeah. Forget Maui. Boys there. Same goes right in front. Same Michael's. Is it money? Like what's there? I can't remember. Is there something that he referred to beforehand? Vaporized. A body can vaporize. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Why not? From pew right leg. From pew right leg. Are they getting married in this little church? I'm sorry. Come on, baby. Oh, got it. Okay. Oh. What is he wearing? And what is that car? That's so weird. Uh, you want to know who really killed JFK? <laughs> That's what it was? Really? <laughs> oh, Lord. Is it worthy of Don Simpson? I don't know who Don Simpson is, but yeah, I don't know, man. Oh, next up, Desperately Seeking Susan. I love that movie so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's so stupid, but I love it so much. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I wanted that to be better. I mean, at least, or at least be bad in the over the top crazy way that Con Air was. Like they had four amazing actors that they really didn't utilize in the right way in order to bring the emotion into it to the extent that they really could have. I, I'm thinking the way that like Lethal Weapon does, and they didn't have the clever dialogue and super cool villain the way that Die Hard was. I, you know, yeah. The exposition should have been more dialogue based between the four main characters: N Nicholas Cage, Sean Connery, Ed Harris, and David Morse. Those four could have handled all of that exposition in such a better way. Like they could have carried that off in a much better way than than just having like minor characters on the outside explaining it to each other like they were giving each other a, a military briefing or something like that. I don't understand why they chose to do it that way. And it sounds weird to say, but you know, there was way too much action all throughout. It was like the the action was like this high level all the way through. In the first and second act I was so crazy that by the time we got to the end, I had already seen so much kind of nonsensical fighting and explosions and people getting shot that like, I was pretty much over it. There's only so much of that that continues to be exciting after 90 minutes. And then you look and there's another 45 minutes to go and you're just like, uh, okay, I guess. Uh, because the fight and all that action was so crazy in the beginning, there was no like natural buildup to the climax. And don't even get me started on the car chase. Like that was completely pointless and the complete lack of women in any, in any positions of authority or doing any kind of action. Like there are, there were women in the military. Like this is post post alien, post Terminator, post Thelma and Louise, post matrix. Like while they were making this with silly girlfriends and daughters who stood around while the men were busy working and doing the thing, somebody else was making the long kiss good night. So yeah, ultimately disappointed in the rock. I didn't hate it. I'm just sad that it wasn't greater because it had such a good core plot. That was really good. Like the idea was there. It was just so ham fistedly created and so focused on filling every minute with like action, action, action. They just didn't take the energy to weave any emotion or reality or character growth or even connection between the characters into the story to get you caring about how it was going to get worked out and where the characters ended up. So yeah, I wanted to love it, and I'm just kind of blah about it. I'll probably forget about it before I even go to bed tonight. So yeah, oh well. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to see all my reactions, do all the things. Tell me what you thought about this movie in the comments and let me know what you think I should be reacting to. Then check out my Patreon to see full-length reactions and watch, watch, watch lots of exclusive content. And by the time this is posted, this may be the case, I'll be changing my Patreon so that you can watch anything without having to pay for it. Um, so I'm just not going to have any exclusive content. That's Patreon is just going to be a place as like a repository for stuff that's not really appropriate for YouTube. So head on over there. You can watch, you'll be able to watch Firefly. Um, at least I think so. I think I'll have to time, time to do this before <laughs> while I'm editing all this. So yeah, Firefly, Shemega Dune, um, all sorts of movies and things on, uh, yeah. So yeah, check it out. I love sharing movies with you guys, good or bad. Thanks for watching with me.